What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Aiden here. I got my friend Rob with me and this is the first episode of the trans topics series I'm gonna kind of start on this channel. I'm really getting into the concept of using series just so then you know there's a wide array of people who watch this channel and you know I don't want to take up people's time who don't really care right? right so you might as well just like let people know what they're actually gonna see no uh, click baits here you know so I got my friend Robbie here cuz I wanted to talk about language and how language varies especially over time so I'm 28 years old and Rob is 46 so we were both come, um, Rob's a transgender man, uh, identified as a lesbian for how many years, roughly? 20. Okay, 20 or so years, 18, something, something like, that. like that. Okay, and so I also, uh, you know, came out as a lesbian when I was like 14 or 15, something like that. So, you know, and then I didn't transition until I was 22, somewhere around there. So we both kind of have that background. We've talked a, a lot about just how the language has really changed over time, right? You know, we all try to be PC, like politically correct, but it's kind of hard. And I guess, you know, the point of this video is to kind of show that what you should really take when somebody uses language that's inappropriate or um, not PC is what you should do is you should feel the energy that the person has behind their words. So I wanted to have Rob kind of just go over some of the things you could and couldn't say, right? Like right. what was cool? How did people identify uh, when he was out and proud? Then I'm gonna kind of talk a little bit about when I was growing up and then we're gonna kind of see what we think <laughs> is PC now and just mm -hmm. the difference between it all. So I'm gonna let Rob kind of have the floor and talk a little bit about uh, language barriers and, and what he knew uh, back then. So when, when I came out, you know, 20 years ago, what was being used was really gay and or lesbian I'm like it, it moved a little bit into dyke was sometimes okay but sometimes not and that that's one word that really shifted in probably the first 10 years I was out that went from being a very derogatory actually being embraced I can relate to that because I think when I first came on the scene people told me I was a dyke and it wasn't like like I'm sure people would tell you like, oh, you, you fucking dyke, right? Or you butch, you butch dyke when I first came out. And, and that, that was, was bad. Very, very bad. So if you called someone butch or was it the word butch or was it the word dyke? I think it was both. Which yeah. is so funny because that's how I would identify it in high school. I was a butch dyke lesbian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eventually you started yeah, identifying yeah, that that's way? that's what okay. I did identify with, but it was just first, you know, I'm going to be a lesbian. I'm like, that's the, that's the correct way. Yeah. You know, and and the guys were, they were gay. gay. See, which is also interesting to me because although I came from a lesbian community, you always are just called gay. Like, you were just called gay. Like, oh, you're gay. It was never, oh, you're a lesbian. It's like, mm -hmm. you're gay, as if gay was the umbrella term of being one gender and liking that same gender. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Fag always <laughs> had been... You know, bad. Yeah, that was definitely. No, yeah, a, a I used to be called fag. a fag was, a fucking was, fag. Was that was very, a very popular. Very negative. There were faggot. a few. There were a few faggot. Yes, yeah, so women who spent time with gay men, and they were called fag, fag hags. <laughs> that was a pro. That was a pro. Yeah, that's but funny. The You're right. But it's the in con the context it was being used, as yeah. opposed to, you know, someone being very effeminate. And being called a faggot was very, yeah. very negative. Yeah, totally. So it's, it's it, you know, even within the time, the word, depending on the context and how it was, how it was used with other words, could be negative or, or positive. positive. Again, so it kind of goes back to what we said mm -hmm. in the beginning. It's about how it's said, yes. right? Because you yes. could be like, oh, you fag hag, right? Or yes. you could be like, you're a fucking fag. Yes. Right? And it's like yeah. two totally different meanings, even though the same word is the same English word, you mm -hmm. know, being used, right? Mm -hmm. The other one be the word queer. Queer was also... Oh, yeah. Queer was very negative. Me queer, too. Queer was, was you did not want to be... No. You didn't want to be called queer. Queer was also like gay in an umbrella term, but a very negative, where gay was the positive yeah. umbrella term, queer was the very negative umbrella term. And it, and it didn't, it didn't matter. Queer. It didn't matter what gender you were no. yeah. referring to. Whether, yeah. 
him. It or was sexuality just, or yes. gender or anything. Yes. It was just a Same negative thing. connotation, yeah. which is really, really interesting uh, because now, right, so you were saying when you first came out, you didn't actually identify with being a Butch Dyke because that was actually kind of negative. Yes. And when I first came out, being queer was not something in my vocabulary. But now when people are like, oh, what are you? I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm transgender, queer, you know. Um, because to me, queer is kind of a very umbrella term. It just means you're non-binary, so you're not like an average Joe, like, right? Whether it has to do with your gender identity, your sexuality, um, I just, you know, any type of identity, it, it just means you're not, you know, cisgendered, heterosexual, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's really taken on a really powerful, I mean, for instance, gay bars. They're not called gay bars. They're called they're queer, queer bars. They're queer bars, which is awesome. Like, yes. because it's so more inclusive. There's just been a lot of changing in language. It, it's always going to change, right? So another thing that, so something that I've happened since I transitioned trans, right? When you first, when I first came out, um, you know, you would write the word trans, T-R-A-N-S, okay? And then there were a lot of, then a lot of talk about the trans umbrella came in, you know, the big umbrella where there's a lot of other types of identities, not just you know, being born one sex and then identifying as a separate gender, right? Um, that's kind of what the word trans meant. So we added an asterisk at the end. And the asterisk was like all inclusive. It meant like, hey, if you're gender nonconforming, if you're um, transsexual, transvestite, you know, however, whatever you identify as, if it's under the umbrella of transgender, then we put the asterisk to acknowledge all types of people and identities under that umbrella. But Within the last year, you know, 12 to 18 months, I've received this many um, emails saying that the asterisk is now non-inclusive and it actually means that you're only talking about like the stereotypical trans person who like, you know, goes from one gender to another. Hmm. So I thought that was really interesting because here I am using the asterisk and a lot of other people to be inclusive and then I'm receiving emails saying that I'm not being inclusive. So it's very interesting um, even how, and we're talking, you know, even when I came out as transgender six years ago, guys, six years, that's it. You didn't say queer either, really. I mean, it was, it, it was just coming, it was just re, like just hitting the surface. But I think now queer is kind of more, way more umbrella, very interesting. And I guess the concept of this all, right, is the, the fact that like we have arguments on social media right and sure. I'm, you've seen them plenty right mm -hmm. we have arguments on social media about language and i just think it's very interesting because even if you talk to someone we're going to use the usa only because i'm from the usa you're from the usa that's our reference okay and i'm sure people in the uk and australia i'm sure they can attest to this also but i want to speak for them so in the us when i lived on the east coast we spoke a certain way when i live on the west coast they speak a certain way here when I'm in New York, they speak a certain way as opposed to in Alabama, right? Yeah. So they say, you know, in Alabama, you say pop for soda. Or like, okay, so in New York, you say soda. Did yeah. you say soda or soda. pop? Right, yeah. So we say soda. Even something as basic as a beverage of, of, your, of your choice with carbonation in it, the words can vary. So I feel like, you know, when you're having a conversation, again, I can't help but feel like this is the main line of this video. It is how it's taken. Is the person asking you a question and using the word queer in like, oh, so you're queer? Are they saying it like that? Or are they saying, oh, so you're queer? You know, like, cause they're actually like, oh, okay. They're trying to, they're trying to, you know, we're, we don't fit in all, all everyone's boxes. So when they meet us, they want to put us in a box. And they want to put us in the closest box, like, okay. They understand. Exactly. So even if you're not really in the box, it's like, all right, we'll just put it in that general area. I feel like that's what people try to do. And so language can be really confrontational when you're talking to somebody who doesn't know the proper language uh, that's PC right now. Imagine someone who's 67 years old. I wonder what they grew up with. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As opposed to like, you know, a 12 year old right now who's like out and proud. Like, I wonder what words they use, right? Again, we argue so much on social media about language and, oh, you shouldn't say this and you shouldn't say that. Meanwhile, there's no emotion in, in text except for an exclamation point and a question mark. You can say something or a caps. You can yell at someone. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I feel like I see this all the time and people want to fight and argue on social media. It's like, 
that's not a conversation. Like having a conversation that will progress you is one thing, or, or seeing different sides is one thing. But to argue over language, it's like, how do you, you know? Yeah. Some people, especially Facebook. You make a very important point of, I think we need to listen to how the words are being used, that the tone, the inflection, the, the, the intention behind them before we judge that they are negative across the board or even positive across the board because, you know, through our lifetime, the same word ha will have positive and negative and positive and negative meanings throughout it, you know, throughout our history. So just listen to how the word is being used and then we will be able to know whether it is being truly used as a affirmative way of speaking or a degradating way of speaking. Yes, perfect. I think that's the whole key of this video. So thanks for watching everybody. Thank you Rob for coming. He's my main man, always helping me out. Uh, you see him on a lot of my videos. Otherwise, please post your uh, topics below. I'd love to, uh, I have a list, but I'd love to add to them and hit some things that maybe you guys out there are specific wanting to hear. I'm gonna try to have other people in the video so it's not just me. So uh, I definitely do have one coming up with the HIV Alliance. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get that to you before uh, the middle of April, but no promises. And uh, I'm excited for this series. I think it's gonna it's gonna just kind of bring a little bit of a different feel to the channel. And I'm excited to see what type of topics you guys all have. So thanks again for tuning in. Thanks, Rob. We're gonna finish our Chipotle and uh, enjoy this beautiful day. Peace out, guys. Peace.